Thank you for, out of your busy day, coming to our talk to talk about how we brought out Hubble outside of Cilium. Um, we got a couple things in store for you today. Uh, we're going to go through some of how we did it, uh, some of the pitfalls, the design, as well as uh, a demo. So we'll pray to the demo gods and see if it works. Um, my name is uh, my name is Matthew, and I am working on the Retina project. And this is my coworker Anubob, and we're among a small team that have worked on network observability for a bit now. Um, and Cilium has been a big aspect of what we've been working on, and uh, Hubble specifically, I guess, the network observability aspect of Cilium. And one of the things that we wanted to do, or we were confronted with, is uh, that we like the Cilium project, but we have a lot of people, a lot of customers that have come to us that run Cilium and also run not Cilium, and they wanted to unify the Hubble experience across both platforms. Um, so to provide a little bit of context, I mean, this is CiliumCon, and uh, I think maybe a lot of people know what this is, but uh, to give a bit of context, Hubble is a fully distributed uh, networking observability platform that's baked into Cilium as of right now. Uh, it's built with eBPF, and one of the things that we've discovered as working with Hubble is that it's extremely tightly coupled with Cilium. Um, and that didn't used to be the case. I think four to five years ago, Hubble ran as a separate daemon set, and then the Cilium maintainers and isovalent team decided to bring in uh, the Hubble project as part of Cilium. And so we were kind of confronted with that history, and as well as trying to, like, how can we bring it to maybe a more open uh, aspect? Um, Hubble also, yes, yeah, so it brings network level insights to fundamental Kubernetes resources, as opposed to something just like, uh, I don't know, TCP dump or just like the vanilla uh, inbuilt Linux utils for network observability. So the problem that we had is, uh, in some cases, people want Hubble Network observability, observability tooling without changing their underlying CNI. And we actually had a surprising amount of people that wanted to do this. Uh, I was kind of taken aback by uh, the, the spread of people that were running Cilium, as well as people that were not running Cilium, but like the Hubble project by themselves. Um, so then we had these two main questions. Was, can we take the Hubble experience beyond Cilium? Uh, as well as, can we take the Hubble experience beyond Linux? And we do work for Microsoft, so obviously that maybe <laughs> alludes to a little bit of we like to take the uh, Hubble project to Windows. Um, that was one of the things that we were working towards. So to give a little bit of context, the Retina project is what we've been working on. Uh, it's a network observability tool that we open sourced earlier this year. Uh, it's a component of the Azure Container Networking Service. And, but the idea is that it's... Um, it's an open source project that we allowed for packet capture metrics, but it, it brought us a way, a platform that we could bring in Hubble uh, to serve out some of the Hubble feature set. Um, the, character, the main characteristics of Retina was that it was platform agnostic, CNI exhaust agnostic, eBPF based, and offers industry standard metrics. In this case, one of the industry standard metrics we considered is Hubble. We considered Hubble to be an industry standard because we, sound, we found a lot of people using it. So C, the main thing was that it was CNI, CNI agnostic, and it adhered to things that people were familiar with. So the overview of Retina, I'm just going to touch on this briefly. This is a Hubble talk. But uh, Retina's fundamental goal from the start was to visualize, just get metrics off the machine. We didn't want to reinvent the wheel. I don't know if that shows up the comic. But the XKCD one is one that's always in the back of my mind, is that there's 14 competing standards. 14 is ridiculous. We need to develop a universal standard. And then there's 15 competing standards, right? And so I wanted to avoid, we wanted to avoid that situation, like reinventing the wheel. Um, and Hubble already does a great job. People consume Hubble metrics uh, and use the Hubble tooling, Hubble Observe. Uh, so we didn't want to interfere with any of that. We just wanted to provide a way to get data plane metrics off the VM. So in the diagram we have to the right is this Hubble agent uh, running on a non-Cilium Linux node uh, using some eBPF plugins that we've just home built um, that, that are pretty lightweight. They don't do a ton of stuff, but they do the things that they, enough to get the Hubble metrics uh, off the VM. So we export to Prometheus, to Grafana, as well as some other people have decided to use like uh, Hubble metrics in their own storage and process data and other data, data ingestion platforms. So I want to just drill that in that like <laughs> the Retina project here was using Hubble as a way to, to, to visualize metrics and visualize network observability without reinventing the wheel. Um, as we were tearing apart Hubble, we found uh, the, the flow object inside of Cilium, which is uh, basically kind of the bread and butter between uh, Cilium and Hubble. Uh, the flow object is basically an encapsulation around the network of the, the five tuple, the source port, uh, destination port, the addresses, and the protocol. Uh, but it also enriches an extra, a bunch of extra stuff, including Kubernetes primitives, like pod, um, a bunch of other things that are relevant to the Hubble observability platform, so to speak. So that was kind of our thing, is how do we get the, the data plane metrics off of like from their our home built plugins or whoever they want, whoever wanted to add a different plugin into the Hubble server, which then took care of exporting to the Hubble metrics, uh, the flow or the Prometheus metrics, flow logs, and flows for UI. So it's like, how can we get the existing Hubble tooling that everyone knows and loves and was very familiar with 
uh, on their non-Cilium clusters. Anubab's going to talk a bit about uh, the architecture. Good afternoon. I hope everyone's having a good KubeCon. Thanks, Matt. Um, so, okay, let's look at how all of this is working. So what we are looking at here is a cross-section of one of the more important components uh, in the retina, which is called the retina agent. And as you can see, uh, the, the agent is in charge of collecting data from Linux kernel, as well as running the Hubble server to publish metrics and traces. We are looking at a cross-section of the agent, and as you can see, it's a three-layered cake. If we look at the bottom layer, it consists of uh, plugins. Each of the plugin is a modular, independent piece of code that's in charge of doing two things. One, collecting a very specific or targeted networking event from Linux kernel. That can be DNS, that can be drop events, or that can be L4 events. And the second important thing it does is something that Matt was just talking about, which is mapping that event to the flow object. Because remember, that is our API contract with Hubble. So on startup, the plugin manager installs, uh, starts a bunch of plugins. And each of the plugin generally installs uh, eBPA programs at various points in the kernel. And the programs generally send their events to either a perf array or a metrics map. Uh, and the plugin user space code reads it and parses and maps that event to the flow object because it understands both construct. Once done, um, it is the event, the flow object is then forwarded to something we call Retina Hubble interface. And one of the more important thing that happens there is enrichment. Imagine you are um, a DevOps user, or you are a, a Kubernetes cluster maintainer. You are looking at metrics and traces to debug any Kubernetes cluster issue. It would be very helpful if uh, the signals you are getting included pod name, namespace, or service name instead of just IPs, right? That would make your life much easier. And that's what enrichment is. It basically uses a cache of Cilium specific uh, objects like Cilium identities, endpoints, and pods to enrich these flows that it just got from the plugin layer uh, and enrich them with Kubernetes specific metadata. So you no longer see just IP, but you see pod name and namespaces. Makes it much easier um, to debug issues or to understand what's going on in your cluster. I'm going to talk a little bit about the identities and endpoints a little bit later, um, but uh, for now, Trust me, we need all these things in a cache uh, to enrich the flow. Next, we uh, forward it to the Hubble server. Uh, most of the blue components are open source Hubble libraries um, that take care of, that takes the flows and does its magic and generate metrics and traces on the same inter and on the same uh, ports and interfaces that you would assume it happens in a Cilium cluster where Hubble is running on top of Cilium CNI. So what this means is you get Prometheus metrics. You can use same Grafana dashboard you have uh, for Cilium clusters. They work. You can use Hubble Relay to get uh, flows from all, uh, from all uh, different agents running in your cluster. Uh, or you can simply, if you have access to the correct certs, uh, curl the endpoint to get the metrics. So I want to quickly double click on the plugin, because this is how we actually get the events from the kernel. Uh, this is one of our typical plugins called Packet Parser. Is it's in charge of sending all uh, L4 uh, events that's happening in each node. So as we know, when a pod comes up, uh, generally we create a pod, uh, the a pod network namespace is created and it's bridged to the host network namespace using a pair of virtual ETH port uh, virtual ETH interfaces. So what the Packet Parser does is it watches for any new with that's created um, on the host network namespace. And if it finds one, it creates this queuing disciplines uh, for both on the ingress and egress side and attaches BPA programs to the queue disk. So now, whenever uh, the pod is sending a packet or receiving a packet that's queued up in these queue disks, and the BPA program wakes up and parses the headers to give us important signals like source port, destination port, and source IP and destination IP, along with protocol, whether it's TCP or UDP. 
And these events are queued up uh, in a perf array, which the user space plugin code reads and then converts into flow and sends it to the upper layers. Um, we have a plugin API interface, so you can create any custom plugin to collect any data you want, and as long as you are, you can convert that event to a flow object, your plugin would work. And uh, we have plugins from uh, other open source projects like Inspector Gadget uh, interfaced with Retina, and those plugins work. Um, I mentioned that I'm going to talk a little bit about Cilium identities and Cilium endpoints. Uh, in Cilium's world, I, I think in, in one of the previous talks, this was also mentioned that the identity is a very important concept. Um, so every workload, and that can be a deployment or a daemon set, is assigned a specific unique ID for its entire lifecycle. And for Hubble to work exactly how you would expect when it works, when it's running on top of Cilium CNI, uh, we want to also enrich our flows with identities and Cilium endpoints. Um, so that's where the operator kind of comes in. So high-level overview, it watches for pods, it watches for namespaces, and it creates this Cilium-specific uh, objects that the Retina agent watches for and caches them and uses for enrichment purposes. Um, if we just dig a little bit deeper, you see that the operator basically is running uh, various watchers. It has a cage store where these watch events are queued up. And then there's controllers and garbage collectors, which either are creating these new objects or updating or deleting them. The thing I want to highlight about the operator is uh, the implementation may be more straightforward, but the challenge here is how to handle scale. For example, imagine you are installing Retina in a cluster which already has 10,000 pods running. So when the operator comes up, it will get notification about all these 10,000 pods that's running. So uh, we have to be careful to make sure we are, the operator is not using so much memory that it gets zoom killed, or that we are not overloading the API server by sending too many requests. So that's where the challenge kind of lies. Uh, okay, so what do we get uh, when we run all these things? Well, you get pod level metrics, and we have, ha we have uh, reached feature parity for some of the more important ones. Uh, we'll demo all of this. So we have L4 metrics at a pod level. We have drop metrics and DNS metrics. Uh, these are all pod level metrics. This is a Grafana dashboard uh, screenshots. We're going to demo all of these things very soon. Uh, you can interface with Hubble CLI uh, to see flow logs exactly how you would if Hubble is running on top of uh, Cilium CNI. And you would also see a, a Hubble, you can also use Hubble UI tool to get a graphical view of network events happening in your cluster. Um, quickly want to touch base on performance. Like I mentioned, we are installing BPA program in the data path. We want to make sure we are not degrading network uh, latency or introducing too much network latency. Um, the left-hand side graph shows mean TCP round trip time. Um, if you see, compared to baseline for intranode, we are introducing around 2.5 to 3 millisecond uh, delay. But for internode, we are introducing uh, almost 10 milliseconds of delay. Uh, we have identified that uh, to our drop reason plugin. And we are uh, enhancing and improving the drop reason plugin to use newer version of Linux kernel, which provides uh, um, a better point to attach a K-probe to be more efficient in future. Uh, on the right hand side, we see throughput. Uh, nothing much to talk about because we are pretty much uh, comparable to baseline. Uh, finally, I want to touch base on scale. Um, this is something we hear about users. They want continuous observability, but they don't want observability to take up memory or CPU cycles from their actual running um, workloads uh, or applications. So uh, a 1,000 thousand node Linux cluster running 20K ping, ping mesh pods, where basically each pod is making new TCP connections every 500 milliseconds to one of the random other uh, 20K minus one pod. <laughs> um, and this is the result over a 10-hour period. The red line highlights uh, the amount of memory we are requesting from the system. Uh, from the OS, and the blue line is our memory usage of the heap. 
Um, and as you can see, over a 10-hour period, even with 20K pods, uh, the memory usage is flat. It's not increasing at an unbounded rate. So this is a sustainable way of running uh, Retina agents with bounded amount of memory. OK, uh, I think we have, Matt, we have talked enough. Uh, yeah, let's jump into a cool demo. Uh, Matt is going to hold the mic. <laughs> Thanks for the laugh. <laughs> that was a joke. Please laugh. Uh, and we are trying to do this live. So if anything goes wrong, uh, just believe what I say. Uh, like in movies, this is a very cool looking uh, terminal. So. Uh, you can, you must believe what I'm doing. Uh, okay, so what what we are trying to demo here is um, we have two clusters, identical clusters, running the same application uh, called this pet store application. Uh, you can see here. I'm just going to jump uh, into. Uh, the UI for this. So it's a pet store uh, demo where you can buy these very uh, cute toys. So let me go ahead and just add two in the cart. And uh, as you can say, it says order submitted successfully. So you, you also have a, a portal for admins where they can see the orders so that they can uh, satisfy the order. But see, I'm clicking on the orders. Again, please trust. I am clicking on the orders, and uh, it's not showing me anything. So my application is broken uh, in some way. So uh, what I will try to do in this demo is use Hubble running on Cilium and Hubble running on Retina to debug this issue and uh, to show you that the user experience is identical. So quickly jumping on the Cilium side of things, let's look at what uh, what's running there on the Cilium. Um, on the Cilium cluster. So we have Cilium agents running, and we have installed Hubble Relay and UI, which can be used uh, to see the data that the Cilium agent generates. Uh, let's see what's happening on the Retina side. So on the Retina side, we also have um, the Retina agents, and we have also installed UI and Relay. So let's first jump into the UI and see uh, how our app kind of looks like. So. Uh, so first, we are looking at uh, Hubble UI. Uh, this is on the Cilium cluster. And if I go to the pets namespace, I see all the different components of the pets app that's uh, running. And uh oh, you can see that the virtual worker component is having trouble talking to the make line service component, as highlighted by this red line. Uh, OK, so this is useful. Let's see what happens when I go to the Retina. Uh, UI. So this is the this is Hubble UI running on the Retina cluster, and if I go to Pets, uh, I can see that. Okay, let me uh, increase the zoom out a little bit. Uh, you can see again the same thing. The virtual worker is having trouble communicating with the make line service here. Um, okay, so this is useful, but we still don't know what is causing this issue. So why don't we turn to using the Hubble relay to look at the uh, flows in real time. So uh, for the purpose of this demo, I have already um, exported the Hubble Relay's uh, uh, external IP in this variable. So let's look at all the flows that's coming out of the virtual worker pod on the Cilium side of things. And uh, we see that it says that, hey, this virtual worker cannot talk to this make line service uh, because the traffic is dropped because of policy denied. So there is a policy either present or absent in this cluster that is uh, not allowing traffic to go to make line service. OK, so what is happening on the uh, retina side of things? How does that look? Uh, well, uh, it also says the same thing. See, policy denied. But if you see the difference, uh, we go one step further here to add a more in-depth reason in the summary, which says IP table rule drop. That is because uh, in the Retina cluster, we are using um, a network policy manager that is IP tables based. So our drop reason plugin is actually capable of knowing that the rule, that the packet is dropped 
because of an IP table that was configured on that node that is preventing your traffic from reaching the make line service. So again, like we see, these tools are very important and they perform almost identically irrespective of what kind of CNI you are running, whether it's Cilium or not, uh, but it will help you debug. And uh, just to make sure that uh, we are on the up and up, I'm just going to pull up all the network policies I have applied. Uh, so as you see, we have a default deny for everything except for all the services that I want communication to happen between. And I have missed allowing traffic to the make line service. And so our uh, Hubble, uh, so our data collection by the retina agent was correct in saying there's a misconfigured IP table rule that is preventing your traffic from going through. Um, so this is very all well and good, and um, this can help you uh, investigate something when uh, you actively know that something has gone wrong. But what if you want to pro be proactive? So here you can use the metrics, feed them into a Grafana dashboard, and set up alerts to notify you if something goes wrong uh, as it is going wrong. So uh, this, is a, this is a dashboard uh, we created to parse all the Hubble metrics. As you can see for cluster, we are currently connected to the Cilium cluster. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> Uh, for, to the Cilium cluster, uh, we are in. Well, we have filtered the namespace uh, namespace pets, and MakeLine service is the one that was dropping traffic. So we do see like um, there are traffic drops happening, and this graph clearly shows um, that there are a certain amount of traffic getting dropped. Uh, you can see the MakeLine service pod is also dropping uh, a lot of traffic because of policy denied. Now, how would it look if I switch to the Retina cluster? And as you can see, um, we also see uh, the same kind of data. There's traffic drop happening. Interestingly, if you see uh, that we don't have anything on the outgoing side, and again, that's because of how the uh, NPM, which is a network policy manager that we have running on this particular cluster behaves, it, it drops any incoming packets on the node where the MakeLine service pod is running. So that's why Retina is kind of identifying them as incoming packet drops, and that's why you only see the data on the, um, <clears throat> on the incoming traffic side. OK, so uh, what else can you uh, see? So uh, this is a dashboard to show DNS cluster data. Now, for uh, Cilium, you need to apply a uh, C uh, cluster Cilium network policy um, if to see uh, the DNS data that kind of uh, falls under the purview of that particular CNP. Uh, but the difference with Retina is Retina actively monitors all your DNS request and response happening irrespective of what kind of network policy has been applied. So. Um, that's why you can see for Retina, we have uh, DNS errors or DNS-specific data uh, on this dashboard. Finally, uh, rounding up, uh, these are all uh, L4 metrics. Uh, the only thing I want to quickly highlight here is if I go to edit, uh, you would see that we are generating all these nice-looking panels using Hubble metrics. And this is happening for both Hubble running on Cilium and Hubble running without Cilium, that is in the Retina cluster. And this circle backs to the point that Matt was ma making, which is we want to make Hubble a standard. So if your tooling works with Hubble, it will work irrespective of the CNI that will be underneath. And that's kind of what uh, this project is all about. I think uh, that ends my demo. I'll uh, quickly hand it over to Matt to take it from here. Sure, yeah, thanks, Anubab. Yeah, so to kind of just round things off towards the end, uh, we've done a lot of work, but there's obviously a lot of future work that we want to do. Um, mainly one of the main things is we want to run Hubble on Windows. Uh, that's kind of a thing that we've been working on for a while. We have an active issue open for the, on the uh, Cilium community, um, and we're actively involved with that. I think we've done a couple POCs, but that's something that we'd like to accomplish in the future, uh, as well as enriching flows with the Kubernetes service name. There's the, the difference in Hubble between pods and service is a little bit different, so pods was relatively straightforward, but there's some work needed uh, for service. 
Um, and then we have some things that we would like to just accomplish inside of the Retina project uh, for uh, observability support using L7, uh, multi-NIC support in a single pod, and we also have a, a Skunkworks project for an AI-based network troubleshooting um, that we've demoed for a hackathon. But uh, I think that's about it. So here's a slide for the GitHub, uh, some email, and the website, as well as a QR code, I think that links to the website as well. So uh, thank you. Thank you.